For those who don't know me already, my name is Michael O'Leary. I'm the founder and managing director of Spectronics. Uh, I'm an occupational therapist by profession and I regard myself as an assistive technology consultant for the past 35 so years. So today we're looking at core first learning, where we learn to find, use and read core words. So and there are our account details. You can go to our websites. You can look at our board maker support request or you can ring us directly. So this is the three parts of the board maker online. We've already covered the editor in which we can edit and create printed materials and interactive materials. And then we have the student center, which is can be via a web browser or an app where students can um, be assigned and interact with interactive activities that uh, teachers and therapists can assign them. Uh, and so now we're moving on to the curriculum side of things. Uh, with ready-made resources that support um, language and literacy. So under curriculum, these are all ready-made resources. There's core first learning supports, finding and using reading core words. That's what we'll cover today. There's Reading Avenue, which is a comprehensive literacy program to teach non-readers how to read, and we'll be covering that in a fortnight's time. There's also over 83, now actually 95,000 resources shared by users in the Boardmaker community, which includes community groups um, that support specific topics, including coronavirus, core first by Toby Dynavox and more. And they're created by the Toby Dynavox uh, team and other professional people around the world where you find read, lots of ready-made resources right for the picking. But today we're going to focus on Core First Learning, which is a web-based program delivered through Boardmaker Online that helps your students learn the meaning, use and placement of high-frequency core words on their AAC system. The instructional sequence includes a series of reading, writing and language activities that complement each other. Finding core first learning, we'll see where we find it, how we can add, uh, assign stuff to a student. You can manage the student activities list and you can use the Boardmaker Student Centre to see how they, how they progress. So core first learning is the found in the curriculum of Boardmaker Online and it consists of 36 units, one for each of the 36 core words. So there's 36 weeks and typically much more of instruction uh, for your students. There's over a hundred, there's 108 books, there are lesson plans, there's 108 activities, there are device overlays and there are print communication boards. Tina Boise uh, suggests that some of her um, students with complex needs uh, could take up to three years to work through the core word pro core words program. <clears throat> These are the 36 core words. And there's a unit of instruction for each of the core words starting in that order. Um, the core words were defined by the project core, uh, which was researched by the uh, Centre for Literacy and Disability Studies, headed by Dr. Karen Erickson, who's well recognised the world over as the leading researcher in her field. And so she developed this sort of, um, these core words. And Toby Dynavox has sort of taken her research and turned it into a complete um, system for uh, integrating uh, the AAC devices with uh, literacy learning. So basically 85% of the words we use every day, um, that's what the core words are all about, is picking out the words. Uh, if you do the research, the numbers vary, but um, there's around sort of 36 
that Toby Dynavox use as the core words. They can be used individually to express um, feelings and thoughts, or and even more so when you combine one or two words together and um, uh, to express what you want. And there's a significant overlap with high frequency words that are used across schools around the world. Um, <clears throat> So, but the core words are important for communication, whereas high frequency words are for written text and might not be as powerful. So as an example, the is not going to get me far as, as far as say want or like or more, um, but it is probably the highest frequency word uh, in our, in the English language. And so, we will provide you a link to the Project Core website, uh, which is, uh, I really impress on you that, to visit this where you can, there's lots of teaching supports and implementation resources. There's uh, an explanation of, of what the project was all about. And there are professional development modules that you can work through in your own time. Um, so I highly recommend you sort of visit this website. Uh, there'll be a link in the PDF uh, that's available with this um, PowerPoint presentation, and we'll also be sending uh, sending you the PDF for that, so you can click on the link. So this real this site really does sort of uh, hold your hand in helping you to support somebody in using the very powerful words in the 36 core words. Now each of the 36 words um, uh, has a unit of instruction and they come with three books that really highlight the focus word. So in these examples, the word he, one of the one of each of the books, uh, one uses photography, uh, which crosses all age ranges. Then there's uh, one for older age learners, and there's one uh, targeted for younger uh, students. Um, basically, uh, we recognise that uh, people with uh, learning literacy can be aged from age four to 104. So it crosses all age ranges because uh, Toby Dynamox know that I get that total range of people seeking support for their literacy requirements and communication requirements. Also get supporting activities with each unit. You get three supporting activities. They vary. Uh, they might be a matching game. They might be a word search. It could be a sorting activity. It could be engaging in a writing activity. Um, or it could even be taking a poll. Um, can be any of those, uh, but for each unit, there will be just three uh, to support that and to give activities that help the learners find, use and read these core words. And with each, each lesson plan, each unit, the teacher therapist, you'll get a quick lesson guide and it stays the same across all 36 units for consistency. And in very broad strokes, strokes, sorry, in day one, we introduce the word and the book title, and we do a picture walk through the book. In day two, we read the book, and we really focus on finding the word in someone's AAC system, as well as within the book we're reading. So helping to start to make those connections between words we're speaking, the words we're hearing, and the words we're reading and writing with. On day three, we're going to read the book again, and we're going to engage the student in creating their own book with that focus on the core word. Day four, we're going to read the book that the student wrote. And then in day five, we might engage in some of the extension activities that are provided with that um, unit of instruction. So that is the instructional routine that remains the same throughout the 36 weeks. You also get a more structured lesson plan that looks at each particular word and will help guide you through how to do a picture walk, how to make a comment which will hopefully elicit a response. 
So there's lots of different things that's going to help you with the particulars of implementing this week of instruction. You also get communication books and device overlays. So if someone's using a static device like a GoTalk, they're taking the core words and put them into a device overlay, which you can slip right in, ready to use alongside the book that you're reading and the activities you're engaging in. So yes, it comes with overlays. They also have books that mimic the Snap Core First layout, uh, the Snap Core First app, with 30, 13 variations of the book, and you can print those out as a PDF, or you can get to them in the editable format so you can put in a specific vocabulary for your learner. And these are all either to use for modeling alongside the high tech version of Snap Core First or to use as a communication device itself if someone doesn't have access to the app. For that app, Snap Core First, uh, you need to contact Link AT to in, uh, source that app and they'll tell you more about that. So why core first learning? Why do we know it works? First of all, it's predictable instruction, so it's going to save time for instructors, but even more so, it's going to release our learners up for success as they get into the instructional routine and know what's expected of them. We know that core first learning gives us a lot of opportunities to engage in shared reading which is a wonderful mechanism for helping our learners make the connection between the language that we're using and their AAC system, the language that they're hearing, spoken all around them, and making that connection to the print on that page, on that screen, the prints within the book. So it's really about making connections between language and between literacy. Core First Learning can really help to bridge the homeschool environment so core words are so powerful because they can be used anywhere by anyone in any context. Not just in the classroom, but bottling the use of core words anywhere and everywhere that goes from outside the classroom into our home environments. Core first learning is fully accessible. So you can move from eye gaze, you can use switches, you can use mouse or you can use touch. And a lot of it has been um, adjusted to uh, work with iGaze now. And probably last but not least, it's evidence based. So Maureen Donnelly, who is the head of the team that created Core First Learning, is a protege of Karen Erickson that I mentioned earlier, the director of the Centre for Literacy and Disability Studies and is one of the thought leaders when it comes to teaching children and adults with very complex needs how to read and write. So Maureen has taken a look at the latest literacy research, all the evidence-based teaching practices, all of the research when it comes to language and AAC development, and has used that to help shape core first learning. Now remember that the whole thing behind it is that we want to find these words, read them and then use them on our AAC systems, making those connections between what we see on the printed page and what we're using to express ourselves. And these core words can be used in any setting. So if we think of the word go, we can use it at the end of the school day. I want to go home. Can I go next? when we're playing a game. I want to go with my friends. In maths class, these things go together or just as a general observation, did they not go right? So there's also a home learning module on the Toby Dynabox site, which gives you instruction with a blog post PDFs and videos on how to introduce core vocabulary at home, especially during the coronavirus. So there's a link to that um, uh, website, which will be uh, put on the PDF that uh, you'll have. So what I'd like to do now is go into Boardmaker Online 
and let me just go to my website. I'm already logged in because I needed to find that. Now, just a word of um, warning, you've probably heard lots and lots and lots about Board Maker 7, which is still due to be released on the 17th of this month, 17th of November, so um, not far away, a week away in fact. And everything will remain the same. The only difference is you will need to download the editor and install that on your device, and you'll also need to download the student centre. So those things will change, and being downloaded, sitting on your machine, it will make the whole system work a lot faster because you're not interacting online. You'll be actually working with your machine, and they sync with each other. But all the rest, including this curriculum, will be the same. All, all of this, the rest stays the same. And for those who already have Boardmaker online, so long as you've installed the Student Centre and the editor, um, you'll just log in exactly the same and everything will work just as usual. So when we click on the Curriculum Centre, which I've just done, we have a look at two possibilities. Boardmaker Core First Learning, which we're going to look at today, and in a fortnight's time, we'll look at Boardmaker Reading Avenue which is another set of literacy books, more focused on just literacy, not just core words and using AAC for communication. So we click on the use it button and you get a choice of English UK and English US. We would want to use the English UK. It's not just that uh, the English people sell, spell colour the same way as we do with a U in it. Um, it's also contextual, so they're more likely to talk about a cricket match than a baseball match, etc. So we'll click on UK. And you'll see that there are three sets. So there are three sets of core first learning, 12 words in each set. Um, so we can look at uh, then we've got print boards, digital device overlays and program documentation. So let's click on our set one. And you'll see we've got the 12 words listed there. And at the top, we've got resources. So if we click on resources, we've got our quick lesson guide, which we can download. And we've got a quick lesson guide for parents so that you could download that and print it off or send it uh, in electronic format to parents so that they can be working to assist you with their child. So if we just quickly click on that download the lesson guide and click on it, there's our core first lesson guide. So, um, and this is where we can look at the thing. We uh, introduce the word and the book. So again, it sets out the schedule. And this quick lesson guide is consistent across all of the core words. So we start off with day one. We introduce the book in day two. Uh, we read the book and find the word using the device while reading the book. Day three, we talk about using the word at home um, this the night before. Day four, we talk about what they've created in the book. And then day five, we can do some activities themselves. So let's just go back here and select the word go. And you'll see that the lesson plan is there. We can download the lesson plan and it will describe um, specifically what you're going to do. Um, we're starting with word, the word go as suggested by the project core. But if obviously as a teacher or therapist, if you know that the student is is familiar with that word, you, you can jump words if, if you know that they're familiar with that word. But they work through the same order of words as the project core does. So let's say we start with the word go. We've got the resources. We've got our quick lesson guard. We've got the Lesson Home to Parents. All three books are printable in PDF format. So we've got down here, we've got our books. Where did you go? Where did you go printable? 
So you'll see this uh, little screen there. That means that it's an interactive version, uh, whereas the print one is the PDF version that you can print off, you can laminate it, you can put it in the book bag, uh, you can put it in the post and send it home to parents, whatever works best for you guys. Uh, and it's also available in an interactive format. As I said, here we go here. So we can sort of um, play this one. Takes a while to download. And so we've got, where did you go? And we can read the book. And you've also got a talk thing so that the student can interact uh, using a talk board um, that has uh, various buttons that they can talk with. And you'll notice that they're fairly large buttons, again, for uh, accessibility with eye gaze. So students are able to make comments about the book that they're reading. And you can still say it to read the page or they can click on next. Um, we'll stop reading that. If you're using Snap Core First, you can launch it and toggle back and forth between Core First Learning on your iPad uh, and or um, using the, uh, the vocabulary within the book. So you can easily swap between the first if you don't want to use, if you want to use Snap Core First instead of using the, the talk board. You can scroll down and also find activities. So if we come down here, we can go to the matching game. We can go list poem, um, etc. And then we've talked about the talking board. There's three levels of support for writing frames. So when you want a student to um, be supported writing their book, um, there's both a minimal level of support. There's one with moderate level of support and there's one with maximum level of support. Um, so we've got here, uh, let me just find those books. Go write a book minimum support, go write a book moderate support, go write a book maximum support. I'm going to select moderate support. Now we have a bit of a glitch with this at the moment because it will repeat itself until such times as I click on the on the book. If I click there, it'll read the book and stop. So there's a bit of a glitch and unfortunately because all of the engineers in the USA are frantically working on Boardmaker 7, um, I'll certainly make it a, make them aware of this, but I don't think we're going to get it fixed in the next week or so. <laughs> And so we can choose a picture and so we can click on a picture that says home. Again, we've got a talk board so we can have a talk board that's uh, again consistent across all of the uh, activities. Uh, we can close that. Uh, we can also select now these buttons along here, write, read all, etc. Uh, they will be made larger so that they're accessible with um, eye gaze. So that's still something that's on the list to be done. Then I will go and we can go to our board. And so today I go, I hope we go to then I will go and we can click on a keyboard here and we get a choice of two keyboards. We've got our core words keyboard so we can click on just home and it will go in there. Or we can go to the keyboard and we can even type. And as soon as I start typing, it will do give us word prediction with symbols. So you get symbols with the word prediction, but it's not a good idea to have symbols with the core word of uh, focus like go, because we know that students will focus on the picture, not on the word. And in this instance, with core words, we're wanting them to focus on the text word, not the picture. But here we've got, we can click on home, and we can say read all. Okay, 
So that's there the books. So we can leave that now. So what I can do, as we'll see with all of these uh, interactive activities, etc., I can go to say, um, I can say go to the quiz, and we'll talk about the quiz in a moment, and I can assign that to one of my students. So today I'm going to assign these to Janin, and we'll say assign. Um, so that will go to her um, student center. We can also say, OK, I want you to read. Uh, we can do the Go matching game, so I'll send that to her. And when I can find her, yep, Janin, and send that. And we certainly want her to read the book. So, uh, ba -ba -ba, Go matching, Go matching, Go matching. We can say, where did this is the printable version? We want the interactive version. Where did you go? So again, we sign that to Janin and say assign. And then I think we'll probably give her the task of uh, writing the book. We might want to leave that until a little bit later, but we can uh, probably do it now. Uh, go write a book with minimum support. We'll give her moderate support. So we'll again assign that to Janin and say assign. And so now if we go to our student centre and I'll do a refresh of this. Here we've got the activities that we've assigned a go write book moderate support. And so um, did I send the quiz? No, I don't think I. Yeah, the quiz. So the other thing that we can do is we can reorder this because we can say we're going to look at the quiz in a minute. In fact, we're going to look at it now by the sounds of it. No, that's not what I wanted, excuse me. So let's go back. Uh, let me go to students, student management. And let's go to Janin. Where is she? Jenna. Janin O'Leary, let's go to her. OK, so there we are. Um, so there's all the things in, in her student center. But what I want to do is do the quiz first because the quiz is not really a, a quiz per se, it's an assessment, uh, which is very handy to do at the beginning before uh, Janin starts. It would let lets me know where what level she's at, and so we can have a quick look at this quiz and you'll see what I mean. It doesn't auto-correct, so we're really just wanting to find out. So show me go, and you know maybe Janin just picks that doesn't do anything more. And so she might be more um, familiar with the communication board and with that symbol. So she clicks on go. And we can click on that. Again, she doesn't really know uh, how to use the word go. And so now we can, and you can, I believe you can read these, yep. So we can say, okay, that sounds right. So the beauty of that now is I can go to my student management center and have a look at Janin's performance with that test. So again, click on Janin. And we'll see how she's gone. So we've got her progress. We can look at her progress and see that she's it's taking a while to load. Hmm, that is slow. 
<laughs> Maybe I'm working it a bit too quickly. <laughs> But we can look at Janin's progress with the activities that she's got, and we can also look at the performance results and adjust her lesson plan accordingly in 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 response to what she's done. So we can look at this here now. Eleventh of the tenth, go write a book, moderate support, da da da. Um, she. We haven't looked at that. Uh, assignments. Oh, that's the other thing in the assignments. When we manage this, uh, we can say go write a book, moderate with the sport, but we want the quiz first. Uh, there's some of her other things, but we can say, OK, we want go quiz to be first. Um, and then we want her to uh, read the book uh, interactively. And then we want her to write the book with support. We could do the matching game first as well, or we could leave it till last. We can look at some of her other sister things, matching Australian natural wonders, and we can say, oh, look, she's finished with that. I really want her to focus on core words, so we can remove that activity. So now if we go back into our student center, um, 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 let me go back here. And student center, leave that. And we can log in as Janin and log in. And you'll see that it's rearranged the activities in the order that we wanted to do them. So <clears throat> We'll just quickly have a look at that. So while we're waiting for that, so this is a good example of activities. You can see now that uh, we've got the quiz first, uh, the book, interactive book, and then we've got assistance with writing the book, and then we've got a little matching game that she can play with. Uh, if we look at the matching game, we can quickly look at that for you. And remember, there's three activities like this. This is just one uh, that's a matching. Game. So she can go through and of course we've got to find is. <laughs> so you can work work through that and again. Um, the, the fact that she's interacted with that and the results of her efforts will be recorded and the teacher instructor can log in and see how she's performing. So let's go back to our PowerPoint. So that's the let me show you uh, and there's the PDF. Uh, you will be sent a, a copy of that PDF which has the five steps for getting start, started with core first learning and uh, which is very exciting and it's very appropriate given that uh, we're coming up to the end of the of the school year. Um, perhaps teachers and therapists will have a bit more time to sort of look at this when we're over assessments. So I've I've created a list of further reading list with uh, uh, links that I've found. What is core? Core versus fringe. Um, uh, fringe words. That's a little video that you might like to look at. They're only short videos. Project Core, that's the link to the Project Core website. Uh, the first 12, getting started with core words. Core Word of the Week, Words and Activities, Centre for Literacy and Disability Studies, uh, and Practical AAC, Karen Erickson. Um, there's a whole heap of stuff that Karen Erickson, it's one of her many um, presentations and a lot more details on uh, Project Core. So thank you for attending today and I do hope you'll turn up in a fortnight's time.